The listing price says 895. So isn't that what they want? Unfortunately, not usually. Here in the East Bay, there is a culture of teaser pricing. And what I wanna do in this video is show you when you're looking in places like Diamond and Oakmore, what you can expect to spend on a per square foot basis depending on the size of the home you're looking for. So you can go into those shopping and negotiating experiences with some basic knowledge and, and not waste your time on stuff that either isn't gonna sell for a budget you can afford or is gonna be too low or whatever. I'm gonna break down the data of what actually sold and we're gonna start right now. Hey guys, welcome back to another video today. We are gonna talk about Oakmore and Diamond. I kind of lumped those two together even though they're their own individual neighborhoods because they do share some similarities. And I want to give you a sense of what you can expect to pay on a dollar per square foot basis for different size homes in that area. So when you get some value out of this, make sure you hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because I'm gonna continue to put out content like this. And if you wanna see a specific neighborhood broken down like this, throw it down in the comments and I'll be happy to add it to my queue of future videos. So let's break this down. So up to 1300 total square feet, what we're looking at in Oakmore and Diamond that is sold in the last six months as of April, 2024 is 20 properties that sold for an average of $932 a square foot. That's our high water mark. That's what we're seeing. So compared to the other videos I've done on Montclair and Alameda, you actually get a little bit better value because those two other places sold for a thousand and a thousand forty a square foot respectively. So, Oakmore and Diamond, little lower on the dollar per square foot to start out. When you jump up to that 1301 to 1600, you lose about 10% on a dollar per square foot average down to $837 a square foot. Then you jump up again to that 1601 to 1900, so that next band of properties, and you saw an even bigger drop which I was really surprised by, 24.6% down to $631 a square foot. Admittedly, averages, there could have been some fixer uppers in there that pulled that down pretty significantly, but I, I hadn't seen such a drastic drop in the numbers in any of the neighborhoods that I look at when you jump from 13 to 16 and then 16 to 1900. Frankly, I was really surprised by that. I do think that some of that data is skewed a little bit by what has sold in the last six months, but that's what the numbers say right now. So then when you jump up to 1901 to 2200 square feet, you actually increase again. So you're at uh, an increase of 13.7% per square foot up to 718. So just to recap, from 1300 to 1600, you're at 837 drops down to $631 a square foot from 16 to 1900, and then 19 to 2200 increases to 718. So what have we learned so far? You do have that trend downwards on average, but I think that the 16 to 1900 probably skewed a little bit low because I know there were a few fixer uppers that did sell for lower prices in that range in the last six months in these neighborhoods. I wouldn't say that that's a general trend that you should stake your claim on necessarily, but it's what the data has been showing us today. So I would say just in general, assume something in that kind of mid to lower $700 a square foot on average, assuming you're not looking at fixer uppers. So there you have it. So then you jump up again to 2201 to 2500 square feet and you're coming back down to $625 a square foot. That's pretty consistent with my experience over the years is that once you get up into that larger size, you're back down in the 600s a square foot. And then once you jump up all the way over 2500 square feet, there aren't a lot of properties there, only four that have sold in the last six months in this neighborhood and you see an average of $494 a square foot. So that neighborhood for that extra size does not increase all that much. 
$500 a square foot, $600 a square foot is pretty typical when you get into these larger homes in the Oakmore and Diamond neighborhoods. So hopefully you got some value out of that. The trend line, in my opinion, is really typical. This is what we see a lot of in these neighborhoods is you kind of start in that 900s and you come down towards that 500 as the property gets bigger. That's consistent with my experience. That's consistent with obviously the data. It backs it up now because the numbers don't lie. Um, but hopefully that gives you something to understand. I think if you're looking for sort of that mid-size home, call it that 1500 to 2200 world, expect to be somewhere in that $700 a square foot, assuming it's not a fixer upper. And if you want something quite large, there aren't as many of them, they don't sell as often, but you could be paying as low as $500 a square foot. So just something to consider as you move forward. Hopefully this is going to give you something solid to hang on to so the list price doesn't just totally throw you off and you can actually know what your money buys today in the Oakmore and Diamond markets. And if you wanna take your search a little bit farther, I've created the ultimate buyer's guide to the East Bay real estate market. I've linked it down below. You can download it totally for free. It's got an explanation both on the teaser pricing, but all the other nuances that are unique to our real estate market. I built it because I got the same questions over and over from clients just like you, and I wanted to put something comprehensive together to give to them so that they understood what the culture was here locally and they could be successful. So if that's you, go ahead, download that and uh, enjoy. And if you want to engage and have a, a more nuanced, detailed conversation about your search, we get people just like you every single day, reaching out, texting, emailing, whether they're a month out, a year out, multiple years out, uh, we would love to hear from you so we can set you up in the right direction and help you make the best decisions. So if you wanna hit me up on this email right here, I've got it down in the comment section as well, go ahead and shoot me an email. I'd love to have a conversation and answer your questions and get you what you need. Hopefully you got value out of that. Make sure you like and subscribe. And until next time, we'll see you on the next one.